Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back again today with another fantasy football video. In today's video, we're going over the week eight tight end start or sit decisions. I go through every single matchup and give you a start or a sit based on the most fantasy relevant tight end in that game. Now, before I get into the video, I'd like to give you guys a word from my sponsor, OverlayDFS.com. All right, guys, so how Overlay DFS works is all you have to do is make 12 simple start-sit decisions. Are you going to go with Russell Wilson versus Deshaun Watson, Jared Goff, or Tom Brady? Who is going to score the most points in that matchup? All you got to do is make 12 picks. It is that simple. So now I'm going to go about how I do it. What I typically do is I like to go for games in here where there are stacks. So say in this game... You see at the wide receiver position, I think DeAndre Hopkins scores more than Michael Thomas, per se. So I go with Deshaun Watson as well. Now you have stacked them. It's like in those other DFS sites where you stack the players. I'm going to stack those players because I believe they are going to do great together. Now, with this, I'm going to make a total of 12 total picks plus 3 alternate picks. Now, the way this works is it used to be a single entry GPP. Now, in these, you can add up to 10 maximum entries and the top 10% win nine times your buy-in. It is actually amazing. And then if you hit that beautiful 12 and oh, you can get the progressive bonus in the $2 game of over $3,000. Now, if you're playing in some of those bigger games, the progressive bonus is over $27,000. That is going to be huge for you to hit if you can hit that. And I think you can. Now, you guys are going to come play against me. Come compete with me. Let's see who's smarter, me or you. Likely, it is going to be you. So let's play together. Let's hit that 12 and 0 record bonus there and you're the stars are going to align and it's going to be amazing for you let's have some fun this week check out overlaydfs.com link down below in the description you're going to have a great time play the rest of the video now and we are back week eight tight end start or sit decisions the first game here is the thursday night matchup between the redskins and the vikings i'm going to be sitting both guys in this matchup Obviously, Vernon Davis dealing with that injury, he is hurt, so you're going to sit him down. Kyle Rudolph has not been performing up to my liking or up to anyone's liking at all this season. He can certainly ride the pine in your fantasy team. Now, he's likely not even a guy anyone owns, so you don't even really have to worry about Mr. Kyle Rudolph. Next game here, we have the Seahawks at the Falcons. I'm going to be starting up Austin Hoopa in this game. I think he has a bounce back game this week after not playing too phenomenal last week. On Atlanta now obviously Matt Ryan did end up getting hurt last week but I think he should be good to go this week if he's even 75% Austin Hooper will be fine now I'm gonna be sitting down Mr. Luke Wilson because Wilson is not Mr. Will Disley he clearly is being targeted by Russell Wilson like his name is Will Disley so I'm gonna let him ride the pine as well this week next game here we have the Chargers at the Chicago Bears I'm going to be starting up Hunter Henry in this matchup Hunter Hunter Henry did not play all that amazing last week against the Tennessee Titans but obviously the Tennessee Titans are a tough matchup the Bears could be as well but I think Philip Rivers really does like targeting Hunter Henry obviously two weeks ago we saw him score saw him score 30 fucking points 30 big ones I think this week against the Bears he should be in for a pretty good game knock one time if you're with me we're going to be sitting down Trey Burton in this game Trey Burton has also just like Kyle Rudolph not performed up to anyone's liking this fantasy football season some people were drafting him super late in your drafts thinking that maybe he's a guy you can fill in every single week no he's a guy that's going to be sitting on your bench every single week Mitch Trubisky is god awful you don't want anything to do with Trey Burton. Next game here, we have the Giants at the Detroit Lions. I'm going to be starting up both tight ends in this matchup. Evan Ingram, given he is 100% healthy, is definitely a start in this matchup. We saw him shit the bed last week against the Arizona Cardinals due to that injury. He needed his huggies, but I think Evan Ingram will be in for a big matchup this week against the Lions, given he is healthy. Now, TJ Hawkins, God, TJ Hawkinson should be great in this game against the Giants defense. The Giants defense has not been all that great against any position this year. Running back, wide receiver, tight end, water boy, no no matter what it is, they are allowing points to them. And I think TJ Hawkinson should have a big game this week. We saw Matt Stafford is one to target the tight end, especially TJ Hawkinson. So I think he should be in for a good game this week against the New York football giants. Next game here, we have the Jets at the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to be sitting both guys in this game, Chris Herndon and the Jaguars tight ends. Obviously, I don't even believe Chris Herndon is going to play in Sunday's bout against the Jaguars. So I would be sitting him for that, obviously, he's not fucking playing. You're going to have to find another option. I'm going to be seeing the Jags tight ends. Now, I know James O'Shaughnessy got hurt. Jeff Swaim, nowhere to be found. I don't even know who their other tight ends are, but they're all irrelevant. Just like every tight end in this game is completely irrelevant. Do not start any 
of them. Next game here, we have the Bengals at the L. A Rams. So I'm going to be starting up Gerald Everett in this game. Now, Gerald Everett has been playing out of this world the last week, or last week and the last couple of weeks. He's been playing pretty phenomenal. I think this week against a terrible Bengals defense. The Bengals defense is sorry. It is a casual. This is the Sean McVay versus a student of Sean McVay game. I think Sean McVay shoves his fist straight up Zach Taylor's ass and makes him turns him into a fucking puppet and makes him do the all the wrong things. Mr. Uh, fucking Zach Taylor said that he knows all of what Sean McVay is going to do. That's not true at all. Gerald Everett is going to go balls deep into the Bengals defense and make all of Cincinnati know Mr. Gerald Everett's name. Now, I'm going to be sitting down Tyler Eifert in this game because Tyler Eifert hasn't done shit all season. Obviously, there was that one game where he scored, but besides that, he hasn't done shit. He's splitting touches with the other tight end on that team. There's just nothing you want to do with this Bengals tight ends. Next game here, we have the Buccaneers at the Tennessee Titans. I'm going to be starting up Delaney Walker in this game. Delaney Walker is a bit banged up going into this game. I think he is going to play. He should be fine against the Buccaneers defense. I'm going to be sitting down OJ Howard because I do worry about the Titans defense. The Titans defense has been pretty fucking good. Obviously, last week, Hunter Henry did not play all that great due to the fact that the Titans defense is good. So I would be worried about OJ Howard for that. And I'm also worried about OJ Howard because Jameis Winston is a grade A fucked hard and doesn't throw the ball to Mr. OJ Howard. Now, given they were on bye last week, so maybe Bruce Arians drilled straight into Jameis Winston's very dull skull that he needs to throw the ball to O.J. Howard. If that's actually true, if that comes to fruition, I think that O.J. Howard would be a pretty good play this week. But right now, I have, don't want anything to do with Mr. O.J. Howard. He is going to murder your lineup just like that other O.J. murdered that woman. Next game here, we have the Eagles at the Bills, and I do not have him on the screen. Dallas Godert would also be a, uh, you would think you could potentially start him. Obviously, if you're in a deeper league, we saw him score last week. We saw him play pretty well. He could be a start if you're in a deeper type of league, but if you're not in a deep league, he's a sit. I like Zach Ertz in this game. Zach Ertz should be able to bounce back this week. Last week, in the past couple of weeks, he hasn't played all that well. I think this week against the Bills, he bounces back. Deshaun Watson, or not Deshaun Watson, Dawson knocks one time if you're with me. He's got the and because last week he didn't really perform. Obviously, Tyler Croft coming back did hurt Dawson Knox one time if you're with me, but I think he'll be fine again this week against the Eagles. The Eagles defense is terrible. The Eagles defense may not be able to even stop Dawson Knox this week, so I do like Dawson Knox one time if you're with me. He's got the eh, so he's going to be okay for your team this week. Next game here is the Broncos at the Indianapolis Colts. And I like Eric Ebron a lot this week. The Broncos defense has proved to not be able to stop anything. Obviously, last week they played okay against the Kansas City Chiefs, even though the Kansas City Chiefs ran up the score. They held Travis Kelsey down a bit. But I think Eric Ebron gets a bit loose in this game. T.Y. Hilton, Zach Paschal, obviously guys that are also out there to beat targets for Mr. Jacoby Brissett. But I think at the end of the day, Eric Ebron finds that beautiful end zone. He graces and touches that end zone like, I don't know how he's going to touch it, but it's going to be a sexual way and very sensual for your fantasy football team because it's going to be amazing for your team when he graces that end zone. Now, I'm going to also be starting Jack Doyle, but he's got the eh slash meh because I'm not really sure if I want to be starting Jack Doyle because Jack Doyle has been okay thus far. Obviously, if he finds that end zone, you can start him. Now, there's obviously other guys better than Jack Doyle, but you can definitely do a lot worse than Jack Doyle this week against a terrible Broncos defense. I'm going to be sitting Noah Fant due to the fact that Noah Fant has no fucking hands. Even with the uh, departure of Emmanuel Sanders, Noah Fant still won't be able to do anything. He still does not tickle my fancy. He isn't going to do shit in this game. He doesn't have the hands. Maybe next year he learns how to catch the goddamn ball. So if you guys have made it this far in this video, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below if you have enjoyed thus far. Next game here is the Cardinals at the Saints. And you're going to be sitting every single tight end in this game. Jared Cook, who knows if he's going to play. Josh Hill, I don't feel comfortable starting him. The Cardinals tight ends, they have a fucking bunch of them. All irrelevant. Do not start any tight end in this Cardinals versus Saints matchup. Next game here, we have the Panthers at the 49ers. I'm starting both tight ends in these games. Obviously, two big-name tight ends. Third leg, Greg Olson and George Kittle. Greg Olson has been okay this season. Obviously, had a bunch better games before. He's been disappointing a bit recently, but I think against the 49ers, he will be fine. Obviously, he's a top-10 tight end, even up against a tough defense. George Kittle, on the other hand, has been performing a lot better than he did at the beginning of the season. I think this week against the Panthers, he has another great game. Next game here, we have the Raiders at the Houston Texans. I'm starting both tight ends in this matchup as well. Darren Waller has been playing out 
of this world phenomenal the last couple of weeks. Darren Waller had a huge game last week against the Bears. I think this week against Houston, he has a similar type of game where he plays great. Darren Fells, on the other hand, is clearly the tight end on the team. Jordan Atkins is not the tight end to own. He would be the sit in this video. Darren Fells is and has been playing pretty fucking good for the team. Deshaun Watson clearly likes targeting him. Obviously, he's not a top 10 guy, more around the 12 or 14 range, but he still should be good, especially against the Raiders, who have not been playing all that great on defense. Next game here is the Browns at the New England Patriots. I'm going to be starting up Ben Watson in this game. Now, I know Ben Watson dropped a couple of balls against the Jets. Maybe he was seeing ghosts like Sam Darnold. But I think this week against the Browns, he'll be in for a bigger workload. Obviously, number 84, big Ben Watson should be pretty good in this game against a not-so-hot Browns defense. Obviously, he's not a top 10 guy. He's a guy that's a bit further back there, but you could do a lot worse than Mr. Ben Watson. I'm sitting Ryan Izzo due to the fact that I'm not even sure if he's going to play, and I'm not starting any of those other Patriots tight ends besides Ben Watson. RSJ, Ricky Seals-Jones seems like a guy that you could have been able to start a couple of weeks ago with scoring touchdowns. Against the Patriots defense, you're not going to be wanting to start too many players against them, especially a tight end that is pretty much a no-name like Ricky Seals-Jones. Now I know I'm going to get a lot of comments. You fucking idiot, Nick. You don't know who Ricky Seals-Jones is. I know who he is. He was on the Cardinals last year, and he fucked me right in the ass multiple times because he was so bad. This year, I thought he could come back. But on the Browns against the Patriots, you're not going to be starting him. Next game here, we have the Packers at the Chiefs. So I'm going to be starting up both tight ends in this matchup. Jimmy Graham is obviously a phenomenal start against the Chiefs defense. Noah Fant last week probably would have had a huge game if he didn't have fucking butterfingers and was able to actually catch the ball. Jimmy Graham, on the other hand, has glue stuck to his hands. He will be able to make those catches. Obviously, I think you are going to have to temper your expectations on Travis Kelsey this week. Do the fact that he does not have his main man, Patty Mahomes, throwing him the ball, heaving him the rock, but I still think even with Matt Moore likely playing in this game, Travis Kelsey should still be fine. The Packers defense is good, but Travis Kelsey is obviously a huge target, and Matt Moore can clearly hit him down the field or standing right in front of him. Final game here is the Monday Night Football matchup. We have the Dolphins at the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to be starting up Vance McDonald in this matchup. Vance McDonald's potential top five potential for this week against the Dolphins. The Dolphins defense can't stop anyone. The Dolphins defense is terrible. I think Vance McDonald has one of his better games of the season this year. Probably his best game of the season. I think he ends up finding the end zone with Mr. Mason Rudolph playing at the quarterback position, likely, or duck. Now, I'm going to be sitting down Mike Licky on my Gesicki. Uh, he has not been playing all that great. Obviously, was much better of a fantasy and more of a relevant fantasy option with Josh Rosen with the keys to the team. Now, it is Mr. Ryan Fitzpatrick. I do not have any trust in Michael Gesicki in this game. So, thank you guys all for watching this video. If at any point you ended up enjoying, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. Make sure you click that like button or click that dislike button if you didn't end up enjoying. That's okay with me. Make sure to leave any comments down below. I always read the comments and I always answer. Have a great rest of your guys' day. Thank you guys all for 2,600 subscribers. It really does mean the world to me. I love each and every single one of you guys, whether you hate me or whether you love me and like watching these videos. It doesn't matter to me. I love you all anyways. Thank you guys so much. Goodbye.